this is Ken Nelson with the Tactical Performance Center. Here with another tip from Ken's office. I had the joy of spending the weekend at the range watching 160 people struggle through a match called Desert Brutality. If you haven't competed, then you don't really know where you stand. So I'm just going to put it out there. Go compete. Now this particular event had a lot of new competitors. And I was thoroughly impressed because on my scenario or my stage, everybody got to their max VO2, everybody got to their max heart rate, and everybody saw how their gear and themselves performed when they were really at their extreme limit. Now we had three range officers there watching, making sure everything was safe. And I was really impressed with how the competitors handled it, especially some of them which had never done anything like that. They learned a lot. I'd encourage you to consider doing something like that as well under safe conditions. Now this video is about three things I saw there that I'd like to help you with today. The first is straight lines between targets. I saw this a lot and I don't know where this habit comes from, but I'd urge you to stop it. Can we agree that the shortest distance between this threat, the lethal zone on, lethal zone on this threat, is a straight line and yet I consistently saw muzzles in probably 20% of the competitors doing this hit drop back up for no reason that I'm aware of when asked they don't know why they do it I think a lot of them probably thought it was something tactical or something they should do the shortest distance between two points is a straight line Keep your muzzle straight. Just draw a pen from that threat to that threat. Straight line. That's the quickest way to go. The second thing is range habits. Now you have to have safe range habits. I'm not going to deny that or put that down at all. One thing I saw that's a range habit that I, I just questioned is I'd also see people putting their safety on between threats and also while moving from position to position when they knew they had more work to do. Okay, I'm gonna reiterate, there's your safety. Point the gun in a safe direction, keep your finger on the side, and everything will go okay. Put your finger in when you know you're on the target, and everything's gonna go okay. Now, if your agency has a doctrine or something like that, honor their doctrine, but maybe talk to them about changing it. Third thing, and this is a little more detailed and this is a fairly advanced concept. Now look up our other videos on natural point of aim. By natural point of aim, what we're trying to do is get the spine and the skeleton aligned so that all the forces you might do either go directly towards the target or if in case of the trigger finger, directly away from the target. Okay, skeletal alignment is one of the primary ways that we can ensure an early hit, okay? Now, where I saw it break down was when people were moving. So let's do this together. Just form your grip and aim at something. Find two or three things to aim to, to move to. What I saw a lot of was rotating the arms, but look where my spine's still facing. Okay, what you want to do is think about this concept. You get some lead, you get some lead, and would you like a serving of lead? Okay. Align that spine and your skeleton towards what you want to hit, even when you're moving. Okay, so that's all from Ken's office today. Remember, visit tacticalperformancecenter.com, click right up here on the Learn Right Now menu, and we've got, I don't know how many videos, how many articles. We're just going to keep doing them until you get better, all right? We'd love for you to train with us. Come out and visit us at a range in Southern Utah or schedule us to visit your range wherever you are. I'll see you on the range.